Welcome to the Photographer Diaries podcast. I'm your host, David Scott Bowles. On this podcast, we talk about anything and everything photography. Hey, (laughs) yeah, I really love this intro. I'm not getting rid of it. Today's podcast is why I became a wedding photographer. And uh, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's get into it. Here we go. What's up, guys? So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. If you're listening listening to this on any of the other platforms that I'm on, uh, Spotify or Apple, thank you so much. Uh, remember to leave comments or reviews or whatever it is that you leave uh, on podcast. Um, in today's episode, we're talking about why I became a wedding photographer, what I love about it, what I hate about it. There's not much that I hate about it, so we won't really be talking too much about that. Um, but yeah, so if you're new to the podcast, thank you so much. Uh, give you a little bit of backstory about myself if this is the first episode that you're jumping into. My name is David Scott Bowles. I'm a portrait and wedding photographer from Southern California. And uh, I've been doing photography for about 12 years. Uh, I've been doing it professionally for about six years. And I've been doing wedding photography specifically for about three years now. So um, I actually was a chef for 13 years. And uh, while I was chefing it up, I was doing, you know, photography as a hobby and and just shooting whatever I could. Um, I picked up a camera in 2009 when my son was born and uh, just really started documenting uh, his life and and just a little bit of everything that I I love to shoot, you know. And um, about three years ago, I was approached to shoot a wedding. And I told myself for the longest time, like, I'll never shoot weddings. It's not for me. I don't like being around a lot lot of people that I'm not comfortable with and stuff like that. So I always told myself, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. But I was asked to shoot a wedding from a friend and I took the wedding on a super low budget, uh, $700. I did photo and video because I've always been a hybrid shooter, somebody who does photo and video. So I took it, said, hey, you know what? I'll make you guys a cool video and uh, I'll shoot some photos for you too. I uh, hired a friend of mine to kind of just shadow me and shoot some video. Uh, He had never shot a wedding either, so it was a good experience for him. And uh, yeah, we had fun with it. Um, And I I think from that wedding, I got hooked. And why did I get hooked? Well, it was chaotic. It was crazy. Um, And coming from my chef background, like being a chef and cooking in the industry, we call it controlled chaos. And I being a wedding photographer, it's very much controlled chaos. Some sometimes not as much controlled. Uh, (laughs) Sometimes it's just chaos. But Your job as a wedding photographer is make that client, make that couple um, just feel at ease, really, right? Uh, We sometimes we go a little bit beyond what our job entails, and those are the really good wedding photographers that, like, you know, you're. I I always joke with my brides and say I'm actually just a professional dress fluffer because that's really what I feel like I'm doing, like 90% of the time when I'm shooting the portraits and stuff. Unless you got that really good bridesmaid that's always down to help. But um, yeah, I got hooked on shooting weddings because it reminded me of being in a kitchen without the politics and the BS of being in a kitchen, right? Um, and I have an analogy for that, and this is really where we're going to get into it. So when you're when you're in a kitchen, there's kind of like three to four phases of being in a kitchen and, and working um, throughout service. And so you get in, you have prep, and then you have pre-service. Then you have service and, uh, you know, maybe after service cleaning up or late night if you have a place that does something like that. And it's very similar to being a wedding photographer. And why is, well, you get to a wedding, the first thing that you do is details. I actually call that prep. I still call it prep. Uh, because that's what it is. You're prepping for the day. You're getting those first initial shots that are kind of setting the mood for the day and, and then how you're going to go about the day. And then you're getting the detail, the getting ready, stuff like that. And then you have what I always call pre-service, pre-ceremony. Um, and what is that is like, that's when I'm 
kind of telling the bride, all right guys, I'm gonna go set up for service right now, or sorry, I'm gonna go set up for this ceremony right now, get some establishing shots um, of the venue, which is a really important shot. You should always try to get one shot, and I try to do repeat this, I, I try to get one shot of the ceremony with nobody in it. Right when the florist finishes the, the touches on the on the arch and um, you know everything like that, there's nobody there, you get that one shot and then I try to get that same shot when it's filled up with like, all the guests and all the family members and stuff. Uh, just something I like to do. But yeah, you know, th those are my analogies for, for being in, uh, you know, from that feeling of being in a kitchen and, and being a wedding photographer. Um, and then you have the ceremony, which I call service, right? So the ceremony is the craziest part of the day. That is the most stressful part of a wedding day because you have 15 to 20 minutes to get every single shot that you need and it's crazy and anything can happen. I mean, the audio can be bad. Like, you know, I've never, ne knock on wood, I've never had, a, you know, somebody when they say, oh, does anybody object? I've never had that, like that'd be crazy. But um, yeah, you know, the, the ceremony is the service and you have such a, a fast time to capture that shot. And it's very similar to when you're in the, the restaurant industry, a little longer, you know, services last about a couple hours, um, depending on which kind of restaurant you work in. Um, my background was fine dining, so we were typically dinner only restaurants. So our service was like maybe just a few hours, but you know. Um, and then you have the after hours, the, the reception. And I think every wedding photographer knows that like this is where everyone's kind of starting to relax. They're drinking, they're having a good time, and you as the wedding photographer are a little more relaxed. Like, you know that it's just kind of partying, unless they got some something special, like, prepared, and maybe they told you in advance. It's usually pretty chill. Um, at this time, I'm probably switching to one body. I'm putting one camera away. I'm kind of pre-packing up for the day. Um, I'm switching to one body. I'm on a 20 millimeter 1.8, getting in there, getting those dance shots. Um, what I have been doing recently is actually getting telephoto shots with my 70 to 200. I love telephoto shots, um, dancing photos of telephoto shots. But um, typically, I'm on my 20 millimeter um, 1.8, and that's it. I mean. So what drew me to weddings, I'm going to be honest with you and upfront because it's just the type of person I am, was the money. Like the money was good. Um, and, you know, it can get better over time and you can just kind of increase your prices. But I, I feel like I'm at a price point where I feel that I'm offering the right amount of value and it's, it's good for me and it's good for my couples. Uh, I, I don't see... The, the, I don't know, and this is controversial, controversial, <laughs> but, you know, some people charge crazy prices for weddings, and on, I'm going to be honest with you, and I said this about when I cooked, is I would do it for free if I had nothing to pay for, right? So if I didn't have, like, you know, rent, a car payment, stuff like that, I would totally shoot weddings for free. Um, and I said that when I cooked too, because that's how much I loved it. And this is how much I love what shooting weddings. Um, but unfortunately, we all have lives, right? And we all have um, lifestyles that we want to live and stuff like that. Um, but like, you know, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine and telling him like, I don't think I could ever charge somebody $10,000 to shoot their wedding. And he goes, why? You don't, you don't believe you're worth it? I said, no, but I, I'm, I'm worth it. But like, in the end, like, I'm not giving them $10,000 worth of, of product. He's like, yeah, but you've invested all this time and money. I'm like, I know, but I just don't see me ever getting there. Like, I just don't feel that it's right to charge that much for just some photos. Um, you know, and maybe if there was, if I was offering more products and stuff like that, and that was built into my pricing, and there was, you know, that there, I definitely would you know, could get to that. But I just, it's not for me. Um, I'm comfortable with where I'm at. I love what I'm doing. Um, I love where I want to take my business. So, um, yeah. And, you know, th there's not too much, like I said, about hating 
wedding photography. Um, I think one thing, if there was one thing that I could really pinpoint and be like, this is what I don't like about wedding photography, um, I would probably just say following up with leads or like just the sales process. Like if I think if that's something I can outsource, like have somebody promote my business and just say, hey, you got a wedding, this date, this is when you shoot it, blah, 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 this is how much you're getting paid, that'd be awesome. Um, granted, I do like building the relationships with my clients. So I think if I had somebody on the front end doing like the sales and, and, and capturing those leads for me and then basically saying, hey, you have a meeting, X amount of time, you know, call this client, blah, blah, blah. I think that'd be pretty cool because that's really the only thing that I, I really don't like about wedding photography. Um, I love going to, you know, the different venues, different places, uh, countries or, uh, you know, different states. And I just love that it's always something new. And that's what I loved about cooking. And, and it reminded me, really reminds me of being a chef so much that um, that's why I love it. And then also like the vendor meals, like usually you get a decent one. Uh, it's funny that the higher up venue you go, the worse vendor meal you get. And like every wedding photographer can attest to this. Like, and you go shoot like weddings at Ritz Carlton or something like that. You're getting like a bologna sandwich. I'm not even kidding you. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, you know, guys, I'm going to keep this one short today. Um, I do hope that you enjoyed this and, um, uh, I hope that maybe you got something out of this, whether it was entertainment or maybe some education, but, um, if you're interested in shooting weddings and you're scared to do it, my advice would just be to do it. Um, find those people that are, are looking for, a, you know, a, have a tight budget maybe, and you can offer them your services, but be clear about your their expectations, right? So be clear about what you're going to offer. Let them know, hey, I've never shot a wedding before. Um, you know, I would love to shoot your wedding for, for $500. It's going to cover my gas, maybe some food, uh, maybe my rental, you know, my rental cost or, or if you have insurance because you should. Um, but, you know, just make sure that you are upfront. Say, hey, I've never done it before. You know, um, go to weddings too. Like, you know, try to go to friends' weddings so you could see the formalities of weddings, especially multiple multiple cultural weddings because they all have their own formalities on how they do things. Um, I've shot Afghan weddings. I've shot Indian weddings. I've shot Catholic weddings, uh, just typical, regular, old Western weddings. Um, I've even shot a Celtic wedding, and those are super fun. Um, but you know, expand, like see what you want to shoot because some people don't like shooting Indian weddings. Some people don't like shooting Catholic weddings. My, I personally, I'm just going to put this out there. So I'm not the biggest fan of shooting Catholic weddings. Um, and I try to take less and less of them. And the reason is those are really long days. And a lot of the, the time is spent within the church in the first couple hours. Um, and they're always really difficult to shoot. Um, but that's just me. Everyone has their own flair. Everyone has their own taste. I love doing elopements. I, I wish that I would get more elopements, adventure elopements. Um, and that's something maybe I have to just build my marketing towards. But um, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Please share the podcast. Tell your friends about it. Um, I'm going to be having some really cool guests on the podcast soon. Uh, some big photographers that have inspired me. And then some local photographers and local artists and stuff like that. So um, thank you so much. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, turn the notification bell on. And if you're listening, guys, leave a review. Tell me what you want to hear. Um, I'm going to start doing Tech Tuesdays um, soon, talking about gear and what's coming out, what's uh, what I like, what I shoot on, all that kind of stuff. And then Thursdays are going to move more into this like formal talk and then maybe some some interviews and some guests and stuff but uh guys thank you so much i'll see you in the next one peace